model of the atom proposed by Niels Bohr was a significant step forward in man's understanding of the behavior of matter. Bohr proposed that the electron could only occupy definite energy levels. When Bohr's electron drops to a lower orbit, it releases a specific wavelength of energy. This explains why excited gases emit only specific colors of light to produce a spectrum of sharp lines. His concept of orbits of different energy levels also allowed him to relate electron arrangement to chemical properties of substances. such as the rate at which some elements react with water. In spite of his numerous successes, Bohr's model also had some serious shortcomings. For example, he was able to correctly account for the spectrum of excited hydrogen gas, but was unable to explain why, upon closer examination, each line in the spectrum actually consisted of two or more separate lines. The next step in the refinement of the model of the atom was initiated by Louis de Broglie. In some situations, he predicted, particles may behave like waves. Scientists like Schrodinger and Heisenberg soon applied de Broglie's ideas to the structure of the atom. These scientists retain the positively charged nucleus of the Bohr model and the definite energy levels about the nucleus in which electrons are located. But they stated that the electron should not be visualized as a charge in a definite orbit about the nucleus, but that at best, the electron could be given only a probability of being found at a specific spot. For example, if we watched a bee around a cluster of flowers for a period of time, and if we could record its position at all times, we would recognize that the probability of locating the bee is great near the flower and small farther away from the flower. Similarly, the probability of finding the electron about the hydrogen nucleus is represented by a probability distribution that looks like a cloud. This means that if somehow we could locate the electron, the best odds are finding it near the nucleus. But we must also recognize that there is a small probability that it could be found some distance from the nucleus. For any electron in the first energy level, the probability distribution looks like a spherical cloud that is densest near the center. This distribution is called an S orbital. For electrons in the second energy level, there is a spherical probability distribution pattern similar to that for electrons in the first energy level. And the second probability distribution, shaped like a dumbbell, is referred to as the P orbital or sublevel. Spherical probability distribution of S orbitals can only have one distinct orientation, while the P orbitals may be oriented in three different directions. The third energy level contains three types of orbitals or sublevels. The S orbital, the P orbital, which may be oriented in three different ways and the d orbital, for which there are five possibilities. Four orientations of one shape, and one orientation of a second shape. The complex mathematical theory developed by Schrodinger predicted these probability distributions. It was further predicted that any orbital could only have one electron spinning in one direction and one spinning in the other. All this information, when summarized, shows a definite pattern.
the number of orbital types in each level is the same as the number of the level. If we square the energy level, the resulting number is equal to the number of orbitals at that energy level. The relative energy of the various orbitals can be shown in a diagram. Each circle represents an orbital. For hydrogen, the diagram looks like this. All the orbitals within a given energy level are at the same energy. The hydrogen atom with its single electron and proton is a fairly simple system in which the electron and proton exert equal but opposite forces of attraction on each other. In atoms of more than one electron, such as lithium, there are attractive forces between each of the electrons and the nucleus, but there are forces of repulsion between the electrons themselves. The result of these additional forces of interaction in multi-electron atoms is that the orbitals within an energy level are at different energies. An arrow represents an electron with its spin. The lowest energy orbitals are always filled first. All orbitals of equivalent energy receive one electron before they receive a second electron. point will be reached where we will begin filling a new energy level before the previous level is completely filled. The orbitals that are being filled, or are the last to have been filled, have the most bearing on the chemical properties of the atom. It is also interesting to note that the periodic table of the elements can be neatly divided into sections. For all the elements in a particular section, the same orbitals are being filled. As a result, the elements of a particular block have a number of similar properties. For example, potassium with 19 electrons has one electron in the outer S orbit. And so does sodium, with 11 electrons. And lithium, with 3. Thus, when chemists experiment with new chemicals, they can often predict what might happen based on their experience with related substances. Knowing where an element is located in the periodic table is a great help in predicting how it will react with another element. 